Hello everybody, welcome to another CS editing tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do shake, flicker, uh, my RSMB settings, and some common effects uh, used in edits. So obviously to begin with, we're going to need a project. So this is the project we're going to be using. And uh, first up, I'll show you how to do shake. So what I use is Esh uh, Dissolve Shake. So if you don't have Sapphire plugins, I recommend getting them because they are really useful. So I'm just going to add that to the first clip, like so. I'm just going to start of it. And now the dissolve amounts. You're probably going to want to bring this up to around 100 and something or so. And we're going to be keyframing this. So just click the keyframe button, like so. Go forward a few frames and set this to zero because you don't want the entire screen to shake like crazy. Otherwise, it will look pretty bad. Um, you can leave everything else default, really. Um, the only thing you'll probably want to change is the seed. So you can obviously play around with this. I'm going to leave this at default. And you might want to play around with the uh, mobile strength as well. Um, because you can play around with everything else if you really wish to. But I'm going to leave it default. Um, for X shake, I normally turn this off. But this is essentially the uh, horizontal shake. So if I go ahead and play around with this, you can see it's moving on the horizontal axes. Um, you can obviously have this if you like it. Um, I'm personally not really a fan of it, so I turn this, I turn this off. I set this to zero. Uh, for Y shake, I bring this up to around uh, 85 or so, maybe, and then bring this down a tad. Um, you can obviously play around with this yourself. This is the Y axis, so this is up and down. Um, so yeah, Z shake. I, for this, I just don't bother with it because I think it's a bit pointless. Uh, Z axis is just the, it's essentially zooming. Um, if you wish to have this, you can obviously enable it and keyframe it and whatever. Uh, but if you already have good pan crop, this is a bit pointless. So I just leave it at zero. Uh, for tilt shake, um, as the name says, it tilts it. So uh, you, you're probably going to want this. So just bring it up to. Uh, maybe that, and then turn it down, maybe. Uh, yeah, you can obviously play around with all the settings. So, the amplitude is just how intense it is, and the frequency is, well, the frequency that the shake happens. So, yeah, something like that. Um, so, yeah, that is essentially shake. It's pretty easy to uh, just mess around with the settings and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. That is how to do shake. All right, so another effect that you see in a lot of ads is a quick flash on a gunshot. So the way to do that is just, you just add brightness and contrast to your clip and then just keyframe the brightness. So you go to the start a clip, click the keyframe button for brightness, increase it to about a hundred or so, uh, go forward a few frames and then just bring this back to zero like so. And that's pretty much it. Like that. Um, might not want to go too intense with it, so bring that down a tad, tiny bit. Um, you can also play around with the different um, fades for the keyframes, so you can set this to something like fast, and we have a fast fade. Like so another impact effect you'll see is radio blur. So I'm going to be using the Ignite radio blur uh, plugin. Um, you obviously you don't have to use Ignite plugins. If you have it, then that's fine. Um, I'm pretty sure Vegas will have a stocked Radio Blur uh, effect anyway. So yeah, that's essentially Radio Blur. Uh, again, like before, we just keyframe the amounts. Uh, set it like that. Go forward a few frames, then set that to zero. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty much rinse and repeat. Just keyframe the effects like that. Alright, so another effect I've been asked about a lot is BCC Temporal Blur. Um, these are the default settings, uh, but you can obviously play around with them if you really want to. Like before, it's just uh, messing around with these sliders and changing the values. As you can see, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is mostly uh, useful for stuff like uh, bits you're fast forwarding. Uh, you can you know, desaturate uh, when you're fast forwarding and add this effect onto it. Uh, it just gives that sort of slight effect. Um, so yeah. Now for flicker, um, this is completely optional if you want the screen to have a little bit of a flicker. Um, you can also use it as a bit of an impact effect at the start of a shot. So I'll uh, bring this down to about 150 or so. 
and press the keyframe button and then increase it then go forward a few frames then bring this down to something pretty low like 0.68 maybe now as for my rsmb settings they're pretty simple um you to add it to the clip just drag and drop it onto this timeline like so where the clips are and i just bring this down to about 0.35 like so, and leave everything else defaults. That is my RSME setting, so. All right, so and then for color grading, I use Magic Bullet Looks to do my uh, color correction. So just add. So I just add Magic Bullet Looks to the entire clip, then click Edit Look. And uh, just do something basic like this. I've already made a tutorial on how to do, how I do my uh, color grading, how I, how I use Magic Bullet Look, so I'm not going to go super in-depth with it. So, yep, now that's applied to the entire uh, clip, like so. Just like that. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, hopefully you found some of the bits uh, helpful. I might make another video going into some other effects that I commonly use, but uh, Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.